Hi, my name is Stefano, and welcome to ABTV News, where we cover the latest political and world events. Here are the headlines for this week. Indonesia police kill most wanted militant. German train attack. Afghan knifemen wanted revenge for friend's death. Two men and a woman dead in Aberdeen Tower block incident. Indonesian police say they believe they have killed the country's most wanted militant in a jungle gun battle. The body of Santoso, who led a group that backs so-called Islamic State, had been positively identified by the police chief who led the operation in central Sulawesi. But police are carrying out a DNA test to confirm that the body belongs to the Mujahideen Indonesian Timor leader. Police soldiers and journalists let out cries of praise be to God at a police press conference announcing the news. Local police chief Rudy Sufarahuriadi told AFP the person killed was definitely Santoso, while another police official told Reuters they were 99% confident it was him. Santoso pleaded allegiance to the Islamic State group in 2014 and had been officially labeled a terrorist by the U.S. government. His small Mujahideen Indonesian Timor, or MIT, group was known for carrying out attacks on security forces, and he urged others to do the same in videos. MIT is based in central Sulawesi's mountainous Paso district, a hotbed of religious conflict for over a decade. It is believed to only have about 20 fighters left. Santoso, also known as Abu Warda, has been Indonesia's most highly sought militant, but not necessarily its most dangerous. Indonesian counter-terror forces have been actively hunting him since 2013 and have done so with greater urgency following the terror attack in Jakarta in January as they fear he planned to turn the region into a militant hub. He was the first Indonesian militant leader to publicly pledge allegiance to the Islamic State group in 2014 and was active in sectarian violence in Pasum between 1998 and 2001. Santoso is believed to have been training Uyghur fighters from Western China in Paso and had links to other militant groups in the Philippines, but he was not necessarily the main terror threat to Indonesia. The jailed cleric Amin Abu Dharaman and his followers are believed to have been behind the Jakarta attack. The July 5th suicide bombing in Sukarata, meanwhile, is believed to have been backed by an Indonesian based in the Islamic State group in the Middle East, Baru name. President Joko Widodo last year escalated the search for Santoso, which was already involving thousands of police by including the military. National Police Chief Tito Karnavian said Santoso's death could demoralize Islamic State supporters in Indonesia, though analysis cast doubt that it would have any impact on the group's support. Prosecutors in Germany say a teenager who attacked train passengers with an axe in Würzburg had learned that a friend had been killed in Afghanistan and wanted to get revenge. The 17-year-old who arrived in Germany a year ago as an unaccompanied refugee injured four people, too critically, in the attack on Monday evening. He was shot dead by police as he fled. The self-styled Islamic State group, IS, has released a video perpetrating to show him making threats. In it, a young man brandishing a knife says he is an IS soldier preparing for a suicide mission. German officials say they later found a hand-painted IS flag in his room. Bavarian regional prosecutor Eric Olenschlager said the boy was a devout Muslim and wanted to get revenge on infidels who had harmed his Muslim friends. He accepted that his own death was a possibility. Mr. Olenschlager said the attack was definitely politically motivated. But Bavarian's interior minister, Joachim Herrmann, said there was no indication the teenager had direct contact with IS. The teenager reportedly shouted the Islamic phrase, Ahalu Akbar, or God is great, during the attack. A police official said on Tuesday that two of the five people injured were in a life-threatening condition. Inside the carriage, a 62-year-old man, his 58-year-old wife, their daughter, 27, and her boyfriend, 27, were attacked. The South China Morning Post reports. They were from Hong Kong. The 17-year-old son traveling with them was not hurt, it said. A source told the paper the father and the boyfriend had tried to protect the other members of the group, but another woman was injured outside the train as the man fled. A news agency with links to IS said the boy had launched the attack in answer to the calls to target the countries of the coalition fighting back the Islamic State. The axe attack comes days after a lorry plowed into a crowd in Nice in France, killing 84 people. IS said one of its followers had carried out the attack. 
Mr. Herman said those who had interacted with the young man in recent months described him as calm and quiet, and they could not understand his actions. The teenager had gone to the mosque on special occasions, he said, but no one had noticed any radical behavior, and there were no signs yet of a direct link to jihadist networks. He had a placement in the bakery and was likely to secure paid enrollment soon. Mr. Herman said there was no indication Chinese citizens had been specifically targeted. He also defended the police who shot the attacker, saying the teenager had run at officers brandishing the axe. The Afghan teenager had been living with the Foster family since moving from a refugee center in the town two weeks ago. Two men and a woman have died during a disturbance at a tower block in Aberdeen, police have said. Officers are investigating whether one of the men fell from a window of the 19-story Dawnside Court in the Tilly-Drone area of the city. Emergency services were called to reports of a disturbance in a domestic flat around 2015 British Standard Time. Police in Scotland said it believed the incident was contained and there was not a threat to the wider community. An eyewitness said they saw a man fall from the 12th floor of the building, which police confirmed they were pursuing as a line of inquiry. Detective Superintendent Dave McLaren said further information would be released in due course. At this time, the investigation is in its very early stages, he said. However, the circumstances as they present at this time would indicate that this is a contained incident and we are not looking for any other person in relation to their deaths. Police dismissed reports on social media that a police officer had been physically injured. Councillor Martin Gregg, chairman of Aberdeen Community Safety Partnership, said there will be families grieving profoundly at this terrible news. Our sympathies are with those who have lost loved ones, he said. The local community and the city will share feelings of shock at this violent incident. These have been the latest headlines for this week. I'm Stefano from ABTV News, and keep watching American Bollywood TV.